Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to start on time. I've got four o'clock. I'd like to welcome you to the, the first lecture in the spring series of the MFL Faculty Spotlight Lecture Series. Uh, and I'm going to do a brief introduction for Dr. Melvin Hill. So Dr. Hill uh, received his BA in English uh, from University of Arkansas at Little Rock. And then he went on to complete his master's degree and the PhD in English at Illinois State University in Normal, Illinois. Um, he came to us in fall of 2009. I remember it well. I drove him back to the airport after his interview. Yes, you did. And uh, we both thought things went well during this interview. Of course, the rest was history. Uh, Dr. Hill has a, a number of conference presentations and publications. I'll just tell you a little bit about his two books. In 2016, he published a book uh, of which he was the editor and a contributor um, called Existentialist Thought in African American Literature Before 1940. And then just last year, he published his second book, uh, also edited and uh, as a contributor. And it is called Black Bodies and Transhuman Realities, Scientifically Modifying the Black Body and Post-Human Literature and Culture, which, as you can see, is where this talk comes from. Um, and of course, you can access both of those books through Amazon. And Dr. Hill tells me that the latest book is doing pretty well. Yeah. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Melvin Hill. Well, first, thank you all for being here. I do understand that you have other obligations, and so I will make this hopefully interesting and brief simultaneously. So we get started. Uh, David asked me to participate in uh, this series in order to uh, demonstrate, uh, explain what the project was. It drew a lot of interest, and so I told him that I would be uh, glad to talk about it. Um, the title of the collection is Black Bodies, Transhuman Realities. Uh, I initially stopped at that title, uh, but the publisher wanted a longer uh, academic title. So scientifically modifying the black body in post-human literature and culture. It was released uh, last year uh, in September. And so it's doing uh, very well as far as drawing uh, interest. Um, in academia. So I'd like to first talk about the purpose of the project. Well, first of all, it was to explore and examine post and transhuman blackness in literature, uh, particularly, but not limited to African American lit and critical thought. Literature has been one of the useful mediums to articulate and rethink visions of human evolution and critically examine the existential crisis of the human through post and transhumanist thought. Uh, the first thing that I did, I uh, reached out to one of my uh, friends and former uh, professors to see what direction I should take uh, with this project. And he suggested that I open it up to a call for papers, uh, seeing what other scholars may have to uh, contribute to the same topic. And so I did that, I received roughly 13 uh, responses, and I selected nine of those 13. Uh, the others were a bit um, redundant in what was already being uh, contributed, so I had to uh, cut those. But the ones that made the collection uh, is varied. Uh, it's from a variety of perspectives as it relates to blackness and transhumanist thought. Um, the origins of the project. All right. Back in spring, back in spring, in spring 2016, I taught a black writers course entitled From Black to White, Racial Passing in America, Considering African American Literature. And here what I wanted to do was just look at the literature that's produced by African Americans that focused on uh, racial passing. Uh, those uh, authors who uh, created characters that were legally defined as black 
and but uh, were skin light enough to to pass. And so that's kind of where the idea came from because one of the texts that we use was from Charles Chestnut. And he wrote a three-part uh, series titled uh, The Future American. And in this uh, series of essays, he established in order to combat the uh, racial tension in America that we should all be of one color. In order to do that, he gives this formula uh, in order to have Americans as one complexion, which would theoretically eliminate discrimination, prejudice, etc. So I thought about his process and considered how that might fit into ideas about genetic engineering. Okay, from Chestnut perspective, uh, genetic engineering would be more physical, biological, instead of technological. Okay, so that's kind of where it, it started. Uh, after which, uh, I looked at Frederick Douglass, who talks about amalgamation, and amalgamation is part of the dynamics of genetic engineering. So Douglas and Chestnut basically share the same uh, ideas as it relates to combating the uh, race relations in America by looking at science. Uh, one of the um, important questions uh, that came up are these, well, three important questions that came up uh, during the course. The first one was, were African Americans discussing ideas related to what scholars now call posthumanism or transhumanism? Of course, those terms were not used uh, in the 1800s, but the concept uh, might have been present in some of the earlier works. The next question is racial amalgamation, in essence, proto-genetic engineering. Okay, so is this process of uh, genetic engineering, uh, was it present in what amalgamation was then called? And then the last question that came up, how does the black body transcend the dehumanizing identity formations and conditions that black people experience? And so there's a collection of text that I wanted to look at, and the contributors also provided not only literary text, but they looked at, uh, some looked at film, uh, others looked at um, music uh, as a way of looking at trans transhumanism uh, in the black body. All right, um, <clears throat> we would be here quite a while if I tried to define from various perspectives what posthumanism is and transhumanism. Uh, the discourse is diverse. And so I tried to just simplify uh, both terms uh, so that we can move forward into the uh, collection. Uh, the essential vision of posthumanism is the idea that the human can transform or transcend its current state of being. However, the term posthumanism ushers in a wide range of contemporary theoretical perspectives. Posthumanism addresses the question, who am I, in conjunction with other related questions such as, what am I? And both of these questions kind of extend from uh, philosophy of existentialism. Under transhumanism, the transhumanist narrative argues human modifications through technology and science to advance their abilities and capabilities beyond their current physical and mental limitations. Uh, one example uh, would be where we are with transhuman medical movement. Uh, there are medical devices that are being used now, uh, such as uh, pacemakers, hearing aids, uh, where one could consider the person using those devices as a transhuman. Okay, that's up for debate, but that's where some of the arguments are, are drawn. Transhumanism emphasizes the potentiality to become, and this is the crust of the project because most of the entries in the text offers this idea of becoming. 
starting from one state of being and transcending to another state of being. One example uh, that we could look at and the potentiality to become, and it comes up in uh, my composition classes when we discuss genetic, gen genetic engineering, is designer babies. Okay, so when you think about designer babies, you're thinking about genetics and identity, you're thinking about gene editing, and this is all about the infant becoming who the parent want the child to be. Uh, interestingly, I first started this project thinking naively that I was the only one thinking about this <laughs> mode of thought. Uh, nope, I wasn't. Uh, which is great because that means the discourse is open up to uh, a variety of interpretations and contributions to uh, this field of study. So some of the recent scholarship, I pulled three, uh, just to give you an idea of the scholarship that's out there. In Post-Human Blackness and the Black Female Imagination, it's published in 2017 by Kristen Livis examines the future-oriented visions of black subjectivity in the works of contemporary black women writers, filmmakers, musicians, including but not limited to Toni Morrison, Octavia Butler, Julie Dash, and Janelle Monet. Uh, I was familiar with the previous three, Janelle Monet, I wasn't familiar with her, with her music with the music, uh, but I can't see the connection between her as an artist and transhumanism. Uh, Kristen Ellis, Antebellum Posthumanism, Race, Materiality in the Mid-19th Century. Uh, she argues that the debates between liberal humanism and biological materialism began during the Antebellum period. It is an interesting text to see how she streamlines uh, some of the um, critical thinkers of the time during the antebellum period and uh, post-humanism. Black transhumanism, uh, liberation, theology, uh, technology and spirituality, which was just released this past December. Uh, Philip Butler explores what might happen if black people in the United States merge technology and spirituality in their fight towards materializing, liberating realities. Uh, I just ordered mine, so <clears throat> I'll let you know how uh, that one is. So uh, those are the latest three, uh, along with uh, my publication. All right. So what I would like to do at this point going to be a little biased here. Uh, look at the chapter that I uh, wrote entitled A Dangerous Idea, Human Enhancement, Transhuman Desirability, Binary Identity Negotiation, and George S. Schuyler's Black No More. I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, Schuyler's novel Black No More, uh, but a very brief summary of the text. Uh, there's an individual named Max Fisher uh, who desires to date uh, this uh, white lady. Fisher's black. She turns him down at this Harlem club that they're at. He gets upset and then he takes everything out on his friend. And the friend tells him about uh, Dr. Crookman who has uh, this technology that would turn his black skin to white. And so for Max Fisher, he thinks this one would be the solution to obtain this young lady that he desires. And then two, it would also solidify his worth and value in a society that despises his color. So I wanted to look at um, that particular text, uh, thinking that it is a proto-transhumanist piece of literature. Uh, there are a couple other scholars who agree with me on that. So allow me just to read a portion 
uh, from this chapter. Human enhancement is rooted in the imagination of transhumanism, which asserts that humanity can be transformed or transcended through scientific or technological methods, modeled in the imitation of God and imagination of Frankenstein, Humans can modify their current physical and mental limitations and transcend their current cultural and social conditions. Regarding potentiality of turning existing humans into transhuman beings through human enhancement from an anti-racist perspective, it is necessary and advantageous to consider asking the following questions. How does the black body prevail over any qualities of privilege, power, and self-worth? How should the black body respond to the possibility of human enhancement to achieve cultural, political, and social equity? If black people embrace this potentiality, how could the original black body become transhuman and not surrender its former identity? The possible answers to these <coughs> questions might conjure some cautionary outcomes and fears worth considering when choosing a transhuman path that crosses the color line and manipulates ethnic borders. Um, that's the first introduction uh, of the chapter. Uh, I go on to talk about um, how Fisher transcends his state of being, his social condition, uh, by becoming a white man. And for Fisher, uh, becoming a white man seems um, to be all pleasing to him until he finds out that he has to negotiate two identities within one. And negotiating these two identities, this transhuman identity and his actual identity, becomes dangerous. Similar to characters passing in Nella Larson's novel Passing, um, it becomes very dangerous. So that is the basic crust of the chapter, um, the backdrop uh, of the collection. And let me read the latter part. Uh, black bodies and transhuman realities demonstrates that the black body has increasingly not only been a realistic scenario of distorted images, but also a fleshly landscape in both post and transhumanist thought. So when we think of transhumanism, uh, we can also consider uh, how blackness fits into the discourse uh, at the same time. Thank you.